It seems like every day we're moving 1% either up or 1% down. At least that's what the last couple weeks or so have been like. But let's put the price and the swings aside. We don't want to let price dictate our sentiment. We want our sentiment to be based in facts, reality, and ultimately fundamentals. So we've got a pretty big event this week, the FOMC meeting. And how is the market positioned going into that? Well, we saw a tremendously strong tech rally last week. Also, the market is pricing a 50% chance of no hike and a 50% chance, roughly, both of them roughly, of a 25% hike and virtually no chance of a 50 base point hike, which I find surprising because I would say there's at least a 15% chance that they hike. Now, let's think about this. Why would they pause? Well, they would pause if the economy was weakening. If we were going to a recession, if inflation was coming under control in a very obvious and clear way, and we were close to approaching 2% inflation. However, none of those things are the case. So I think 25 base points very unlikely, but no hike is very unlikely. I think no hike is very unlikely. What makes me say that? Well, Atlanta Fed GDP, Atlanta Fed GDP estimates for Q1 recently revised higher to over 3%. That is tremendously strong growth. We've obviously seen the implications of that growth for inflation. We had very high inflation in January both CPI and its subcategories and PCE and its subcategories. In February, the data we've gotten so far indicates still very high numbers and very, very high core numbers month on month, higher than expected. More importantly, 0.5% month on month for core. That's a lot. That's reaccelerating and getting up to the higher end of the total range that it has been in throughout the inflation battle. So recession, hardcore economic weakness might happen, but it's not happening yet. And inflation is remaining strong, so they have to keep hiking. Ultimately, interest rates are below the rate of inflation, which means they're negative in real terms. And if you're expecting inflation to stay high as it is in this moment today, then it makes sense to borrow all the money you possibly can. Because if you don't, your cash is going to lose money. If you do, the amount that you owe goes down in real terms. So as long as that is the case, as long as you're incentivized to borrow money, inflation is going to stay hot. And you're essentially incentivized to spend and spend and spend. And the spending is staying strong. It's, it's there. And as of right now, obviously subject to change. And it, it will change at some point. And the economy will begin to weaken at some point. But neither of those outcomes are good for stocks. Both higher interest rates, making it more compelling to buy bonds. I don't know if you have wealthy relatives who are older, but they are probably hearing about the two-year being at a high interest rate. And they might have asked you, what do you think about the two-year? Or might have said to you, I'm buying the two-year because that's what a lot of people who are older were incentivized to do. Guess what that means? That means less money in the stock market. That means people selling. You do, the, you do the logic on that, it's not good for stocks. It means that stocks have to generate more money to have the same price because there are better alternatives. That's the way it goes. Unfortunately or fortunately for you, that's the way it is. I don't make the rules here. Don't hate the player, hate the game. So you got that, you got economic weakness. As I said, so far this year, we've seen tremendous strength in tech. But last I checked, the biggest tech players are not growing their earnings. If they're not growing their earnings, why do they have an above average multiple? Above average multiple is for above average growth rate. They don't have a growth rate. Apple, no growth rate. Microsoft, no growth rate. Amazon, no growth rate. Google, no growth rate. No growth rate, no growth rate, no growth rate, no growth rate for the biggest companies. There's a very notable divergence here occurring today. Microsoft down, I think 3% I saw, you know, Apple up 1.5%, 2%, something like that. So there is divergence out there. It's one day. We're not looking into things too much in one day. We're going to stay cool, calm, and collected 
and we're gonna wait for the FOMC meeting. That's all we're doing. We're just we're just waiting for the FOMC meeting because this FOMC meeting, unlike the last one, is going to have a dot plot. There's a hundred basis points of cuts priced in this year. That's probably not gonna be reflected in the dot plot. The dot plot is gonna show the Fed's uh, expected inflation rate or interest rate at the end of this year, at the end of 2024, at the end of 2025, and then the long term interest rate. And if that if that if that fundamental thing matters, which obviously it does. It's the Fed's dot plot for where they are going to put interest rates. This is the body that has its hands on the levers of power. You can shout at them all you want, you can complain all you want, you can price things all you want. They're the Fed. They make the decision. That's the only thing that matters, not what you think, not what I think, what they do. So there's quite a big divergence between where they were last time, where I expect the, them to be this time, and where the market is. So big FOMC meeting this week. That's today's video, and until next time, peace out.